Then we went over pricing. So this is a 5,500 pound website, which is about 7.5, 7.7 $7, $7, $7, thousand $7, Biggest uh, focus this week is to try and finish our website. And in this session that I'm about to do, try and do a deep work session for an hour and a half. No email, no phones, no instant messaging and see how I get on. had a sick deep work session I got like a couple of pages done and uh, yeah uh, you know we as I said in a couple of episodes ago like we had a website but never really built anything out that fully shows our portfolio and because of that I don't think we've really grown past uh, as I said like fifty thousand dollars a year at the moment so yeah I've been um, working on this website this morning and now I've got a couple of meetings and a bit of client work to do as well. So this will stay here. And then tomorrow morning, I've got the same four hour slot to try and get this website done this week. Something I wanted to show you all that I picked up from Tim Ferriss was a, a little morning routine that he has written down um, here in my planner. You can't read it from here probably, but what, what you have to do is you have to put down what's the one thing that you would do today that would mean that you would have a great day and then also three things that you're grateful for. Hey vlog, I'm just divvying up some tasks that our client gave us. Not all clients are as good as Sebastian with giving us screenshots and like doing some of the design work for us, but he's been very detailed in what he wants. Remember I was telling you last episode that I'm no longer doing work anymore and I'm getting out of fulfillment. So what I've been creating in Coda is my own task management system projects because I'm, I'm not very satisfied with ClickUp. I think that having everything in just one tech stack is better than being split over Coda and ClickUp. So in Coda, what I'm doing now is divvying up all the tasks, trying to be as descriptive as I can in the comments and putting screenshots as well. And then also scheduling for next week for the work to be done. In the meantime, I've got a, a freelancer on board I'll give him these tasks. He starts next Tuesday and then uh, give it to my client Wednesday afternoon. So I'm very hands off with this, but it feels very good. So um, yeah, see you later, bye. Hey vlog, it's been a really good day today. Uh, the sales meeting that I was preparing for today and it's closed. So in a week's time, I'm going over to sign a contract with them, but they're very happy with what I presented and uh, happy to go forward. So. It's always at that nerve wracking stage where you're like in between now doing the project and signing, but you always need to give them a cool off period to be able to read the proposal and really think out any questions that they have. The important thing that I did here that I think all of you should do is I booked in another meeting in their diary to bring the contract in and sign it with them because otherwise you're leaving it up in the air and then you're relying on email and it's just like really messy, you know, and it leaves a lot less things to uncertainty. Something that I do with some clients if they're more visual and they can't really get a vision is I'll throw in some like sample stuff and in this presentation I kind of just phrased it to them as like this is kind of the vision that we're kind of seeing as to like what we think the new website could look like. We just want to make it a lot more modern, tasteful. I said you know our overall goal in this case is to make it elegant but respectful at the same time. Then we went over pricing. So this is a 5,500 pound website, which is about 7.5, 7.7 $7, Um, I then have a template that I have always for discovery, design, development, and the deliverables as well. I think it's really important to let them know what they're gonna be getting in each stage. And then uh, as I've shown you before in the template, it's just a timeline of how long a website takes to make. And then thank you at the end. So something different that I did in this meeting because they hadn't used Webflow before was I pulled up our website and I'll show you now. So I pulled up our website and I put my laptop on his lap and I said, hey, just try typing like a word and see how that works. And I said, hit the publish button and publish some content. And then 
I said, go to the collections and create an article. Now I'm directing him from behind his shoulder, but he's doing all the clicking so he can quickly understand how easy it is for his team to upload and update the website. And this is something I'm learning like more and more in sales. The more that you get the client to do stuff and for them to have some practical experience, the better, because there's nothing worse than getting a lecture given to you. Whilst it's quite fun for him to like delete a word and publish my site and just have a bit of fun with it, right? Something I would uh, highly recommend if your client hasn't used Webflow before, to just say at the beginning, would you like a demo of how to use Webflow? You do the demo. After the demo, we had a bit of chit chat. Then I took them through the proposal. Something I learned from Christo as well is just very calmly say, so for this project, I think the price is gonna be around 5,500 pounds. Leave a pause and then say, does that work for you? It's not a nice question to be asked because it puts a lot of pressure on you, but it's good to do it as well because immediately they'll be able to say yes or no. And I think it's really important to like not try and sell the number. You have to be really confident that that's your number and that's what you're gonna to stick to. Just had a lovely call with a developer that we're working with and I wanted to show you a sort of process I have when I'm hiring new contractors or designers or developers. So um, he was asking about hiring a front-end developer that he wanted to work with. And I said that we follow this process pretty much every time that we're working with somebody. So we create a test project in Webflow so that they can sign in, go into a Webflow project, and just uh, make sure that they understand how to move around the designer and the other work on a project that we may have worked on previously as well. Sometimes this might be an old client project that we've got going, or I'll just ask them to go on our website and just have a look and click around. I'll then create a test task for them. So try and think of something that's not too technical that they can complete quite easily within 10 minutes. This way it's fair for both of you, but at the same time, they're not spending hours for free on stuff like this. Analyze their progress. So how quick did they do it? If you're taking on an intern, I wouldn't say this first one is like a very big thing to focus on but definitely you want somebody who's proactive. So did they need to ask for help? And then also, was it easy to work with them? So you don't. So um, yeah, I would always say as well, the biggest thing out of all of this is patience. Some people take time to get used to your process. So over the weekend, I wrote out a load of like protocols that I want to put in place for when a new client update comes in, etc. Because right now, when a minor or a large change request comes in, I kind of scramble to just get it done rather than being fair to myself and telling the client that in fact it can't be done straight away because we're really busy and in fact now we need some protocols in place so if an urgent change is incoming from a client and it's minor then we have a three day policy that we'll look at it in three days time and then if a large change request comes in then there's a two week wait period because we're actually booked up two weeks in advance now and then as well as that, I've written out instructions for team members to look at as well so they understand what they should be doing if anything comes in rather than me always having to be the person that they go and ask. Instead, they can come to the wiki and they can search it or have a look for it inside here. Something that was a big focus of my lifestyle coaching this week is I want to get better at scheduling and completing work and staying on track and having a really busy day. So before I did this... I had uh, really spotty days in my calendar where we would have like whole gaps of hours. And if I told you what I'd done that week, I don't think I'd be able to tell you when it comes to the, the gaps. I mean, Google Calendar first of all was used to, just for meetings. And as you can see, my use of it has slowly grown heavily over time. So now where I wanna have like a set schedule. So after uh, two hours of planning, this is the week um, so far that I have to work on. This is what a base template looks like. And ideally what I'm going to be doing is holding the first four hours of every day so that I can be having deep work sessions working on a specific and particular project. I then have my evening scheduled for not really a lot. I'm actually part of two meditation groups, one based in Oxford and one based in Bristol, uh, which I like to do on a Tuesday, Wednesday and a Thursday. Feels good to be this busy, I think. Do you guys use anything to particularly track your stuff like Google Calendar or ClickUp or something like that? Or Trello? I know a lot of people like Trello as well. Let me know. What's up, vlog? On the move again today. 
So this morning I have a meeting with my buddy called Paolo, who is a videographer who I do a lot of work with. Uh, I'll see if I can throw in a clip of some stuff that we've done together for clients on here. So um, you remember how I told you that we were working on our website the other day? And now what we're also doing is working on a landing page. So the landing page is going to be part of our paid marketing efforts now. So we're no longer going to be relying just on referral, but trying to actually pay to win some cl clients and customers. So what I'm doing is building a really nice landing page. It's kind of like based off of our theme of our website, which is easy enough. And then Paolo is going to help me produce a really high quality video to go on the top. And then also we're going to have a video ad on Facebook that will go out as well. So yeah, pretty excited. I'm off to Paolo's now. So vlog, this is um, Paolo's uh, toy. And this is, uh, what camera is this? Black Magic. Black Magic, it's nice. Okay. Yeah, we had an early good time, just cracking it out and talking about some ideas. We we're gonna be doing for Harry's uh, new video to overall, it's been really good. Smashed it. Just thought I'd show you guys a little bit more where I live. Uh, so this is an old railway track that's now been converted into a cycle slash pedestrian path. It's a great walk that you can take along the river local to me. It really helps clear your mind as well. And I don't know about you guys, but like working on a computer all day can really stress you out sometimes. So it is really nice just to be able to take a walk out in nature and just kind of relax, clear your head and then get back to it. So vlog, uh, this is the outro for this week. And I just wanted to know what are you doing at the moment sales wise? that you might be stuck on, let me know in the comments. I'll try and reply and help out as many of you as I can.